let's start with the easy stuff first, of course. And that would be with uh, these indentations on her arm, which I'm sure she got from either leaning on something or her bracelets came down here and spent some time and gave her this indentation. But this is really easy to do. And we're always going to make a new layer. So I'm going to hit Shift Command N or Shift Control N on a PC to create a new layer. And we'll call this layer. I always like to name my layers if I can. You don't always have to do this, but it's kind of a good habit to get into. And we'll just call this uh, Retouch. We might use this layer for several different things. Um, so I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool right here, or I'm sorry, I'm going to use the Healing Brush. And we're going to change the size of our brush a little bit. We're going to make it a very soft brush. And I'm going to do a source right here and just simply go over this. And notice I'm going in the direction of the shadow right here. I mean, even though the clone stamp will let you get away with quite a bit, I mean, I could sample over here and go like this and it'll match it and do a good job. But again, it's good habit to do the source from right above. Like this is the way the shadow is and it's moving this way, going from your right to left. So I'd like to do the source right above this line and clone with it. And it may, it's not really making a big difference here one way or the other, but you may notice in, when you're doing using the healing brush that it will make a huge difference in other situations. So let's do it right here. And we can still see that kind of indentation there. Try to match that a little bit better. Okay. So, very easy to do right there. Uh, I see a little blemish right here I might want to take care of. Let's go back to the clone stamp tool. Take care of this. Make quick work of that. And of course, like once I get in here, I start seeing stuff and get carried away. <laughs> so anyways, all right. So we've got that taken care of. Generally, you want to take care of any skin issues, blemishes, that kind of stuff. You can do that all in the same layer before you start really doing anything else. Because once you start smoothing skin and all that, and then you come back to start doing the blemishes, it can really mess up what you've done before. So it's good to get everything the way you want it. Blemishes, I'm talking about, on the skin. Any corrections you may want to do if you want to fine-tune the the uh, the lips here as far as the how the lipstick might be maybe run it's they've done a good job in this particular image but some you might see some smearing I see a little bit right here but we're not going to worry about that so let's get rid of these couple of little blemishes right here very easy to do now I'm using the healing brush and you could use the clone stamp tool but the healing brush does a really good job on this kind of stuff and you could even use the spot healing brush where you don't need to do any source. You can just literally draw on it, kind of like you would a, a paintbrush. And uh, I'm using a Wacom tablet here in case you're wondering how I'm zipping back and forth here. And get rid of these blemishes. So here's the before and after. It's always a good idea to turn off and on your layers to see which way you're going and make sure you're not overdoing what you're doing. Another good reason to put your work on a different layer. So I'm going to go back to the healing brush. Let's zoom out a little bit. And I don't, you know, she's a young girl. She doesn't have hardly anything wrong with her skin. Um, I mean, if we wanted to, we'd go in here and touch this up, which I think right here I'm seeing a little discoloration, not necessarily in her skin, but it looks like some makeup or something. So I'm going to go in here and see if I can fix that. A little bit. I'm trying to make this blend a little bit better right here. So that's okay. We have something right here. Now the healing brush always tends to want to pull. And you see where it pulled up right here? Which I don't like that at all. All we really want to do is dodge this down a little bit or we want to lighten this area. Now you might be tempted to use dodge and burn but what's a great tool here is the clone stamp tool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the mode up here. Normally, probably most of you would use this in normal mode. But if I use this in normal mode, it's going to take exactly what I'm trying to clone over here and put it right there. 
which I don't really want to do because that looks horrible. Really what I want to do is I only want to lighten the area over here that's darker than the area I am sampling. Okay, so that means if any other area that I run into that equals this brightness or luminance, it won't have any effect on. So if I go over here and I say lighten, so that means anything that's darker than this area, it will lighten. So I might want to go up here. And I'm also going to take the brush and t put it down to like 20%. I want, to, I want to build on this. I don't want to just do one swipe and be done. I want to build on it. So I'm just going to swipe over it. Swipe over it. Do this a little bit at a time. And you can see where it's getting lighter and it's blending a little bit better. I'm going to sample over here a little bit. And just blend this down a little. Now if you keep doing this over and over. See that last pass was a little too much. So I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. And we can see just not a really good transition right down there. You see that you see this line, that distinct line. So let's move this over. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to lower my brush to 10%. Let's go over here and I'm just going to lighten this area a little bit. And I'm, I'm picking up, I'm stroking it a little bit and then I'm picking it up and doing it again. So I'm really building on this right here to make this more even. Now what I might do still yet, and that's pretty good right there. Let's look at our before and after. Before, after. Not bad. Is I may go back to the healing brush and just go along this edge here just to blend it a little bit better. So there's our before and there's our after. So I'm going to, you could work on that some more if you wanted to. I'm starting to see a, a line right here. So I'll take that healing brush, go across that line to help blend us a little bit better. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm picking up that line up there, which, you know, you got to be careful of where you're pulling your source from. Now I think I just gave her a scar. So I'm going to go back to this brush and, you know, this is taking me a little bit longer than I wanted to, but this is a good example of, you know, how you can back yourself in a corner. You keep working on something that, you know, at some point you could just erase all of this and start over. I don't want to bore you with that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to call that good because we are zoomed in here. So, you know, if we went to this normal zoom here, now we're, this is our before and after, which looks pretty good. We've changed the shadowing a little bit, but I think we're okay. So I'm going to call that good. She has, you know, maybe a little blemishing right in here. So again, I'm going to take my switch over here to my healing brush, do a source down here and just retouch that a little bit and I'm being really really picky here I don't know that you would need to do this but you know we're kinda of going for a little bit of flawlessness here and let me talk a little bit about retouching here now if you're doing a portrait then it's up to the client really if it's just up to you the photographer you probably want to do minimal work but just about every person who is having their portrait done would want to have any blemishes removed or pimples stuff that is normally not there scars and stuff I do not remove unless the client tells me that they want them removed because that's part of their character so I don't want to take liberties with that and remove that um, but certainly things like whitening their eyes, brightening, you know, anything to just make the image pop and to make them really stand out is pretty much free game. Now, if it's a beauty shot, you could probably push that a little bit further. If it's a fashion shot, then you have free creative license, <laughs> meaning you can go in here and give her higher cheekbones, manipulate her face. You can do whatever you want. Bring her eyes closer together, give her more hair, make her legs longer, bring her shoulders, whatever you want to do. Because fashion is all about making a statement and getting people's attention. It really has nothing to do with realism whatsoever. It has to do with a creative process. So that being said, I'm going to probably treat this as somewhere in between, but this is something, if this was a client of mine, this is what I would probably go in and do.